Hello, my name is Blake and welcome to In the Hyperloop. In this news pod, we're going to break down about six, seven articles that have recently appeared in the news or Hyperloop companies updating their website. So let's get started with the boring company. So this is a great place to kind of keep tabs on the latest news, the FAQ section of the boring company's website. Um, if you keep scrolling down, um, you start learning about the actual engineering, the planning, um, what it will do, how much it will cost, um, how can you avoid major congestion at entry and exit points, um, what is an electric skate and why use it, what projects are in the works and their subpages. But what I find really fascinating is this new part. What does the inside of the tunnel look like? And as you can read it, um, it just kind of explains why they do this, you know, and why uh, there's an emergency uh, scenario in the manufacturing of these tunnels. And, you know, how do you evacuate people? So they're really focusing on kind of the human part of this technology and building of tunnels. What if there's a fire? And then they also offer the community feedback. So if you want to keep up to date with The Boring Company, follow their social media and everything, but also check their website in the FAQ section. So next we're going to learn about a press release that happened from uh, four different companies, Hyper Poland, uh, Hart Hyperloop in the Netherlands, Zelleros, which is in Spain, and Transpod, which is a Canadian company. So they issued this uh, press release on the 27th of June, and basically they're trying to pool their resources and standardizations um, so they can study and promote Hyperloop in Europe a lot easier. Um, this is really interesting and uh, you know, we have been following and have done interviews with a number of these companies and it's really nice to see that there's a lot of synergy within the European companies out there on standardization and regulation for Hyperloop. The next is a blog post by Hart Hyperloop, the Dutch uh, company, and it really goes into explaining why uh, Hyperloop is a valid mode of transportation competing with short haul flights. And um, they go heavily into the sustainability aspect and energy consumption of different modes of travel, including train, electric car, cars, and airplanes and Hyperloop. Um, it really goes into the sustainability and climate change and why the Netherlands is a, uh, should be a leader and can be a leader um, in developing this new technology, even when uh, the Netherlands has great airport infrastructure, great high-speed travel and train infrastructure. So it's a fascinating read and uh, definitely subscribe to Hart's um, Medium page. So next is a news article um, in France of the you know developments of different Hyperloop companies, uh, mainly HTT and Transpod, and both uh, comparing both of these companies and how they're building test tracks. And it really just kind of fleshes out um, what these two companies are doing, why are they doing it, um, what are the barriers that they're encountering um, right now, and you know why uh, you know they're doing it in France in particular, and the exact landscapes and different locations of each company and their test tracks. So it's a fascinating read. It was translated in, from French into English. Um, but it's still totally worth it. Next is a news article that just got published uh, today, a press release by Virgin Hyperloop One. It's the Spanish government um, working with Hyperloop One to develop a test track. And as I make that bigger, um, I'm sorry, not a test track, an innovation center, which seems very similar to an innovation center that was proposed by Hyperloop TT in Brazil, which is called the XO. And this facility um, really kind of merges a lot of different um, industries and science base and uh, high-tech manufacturing base in southern Spain. And, you know, it's a really fascinating read. Um, you know, Virgin Hyperloop One is already working in uh, Saudi Arabia and in India and uh, Dubai 
and the United States. So, you know, it really kind of fleshes out a European uh, base for Hyperloop One. And um, again, definitely check it out. It would be open um, mid, you know, by 2020, which kind of is in line with um, what uh, Hyper, sorry, Transpod and Hyperloop TT are doing uh, in France. So they're all kind of coming around the 2019s, 2020s. Um, and then finally, this article, and unfortunately it's behind a paywall, but definitely get a subscription. Um, it's about Hyperloop in uh, Apple's backyard and just how different um, local municipalities and government officials are wooing Hyperloop companies um, to see how their technologies might affect transportation planning in the next decades. And it's a fascinating read. I think we're going to see a lot more of these kinds of um, plays by different companies. And, you know, we're already seeing it with um, Chicago and the Boring Company and how there was a bidding process between two different companies and the Boring Company won. And, you know, they're fully, uh, you know, private partnership, but also working with the government and the public uh, space. So, Stay tuned to In the Hyperloop. We'll be sharing more of these news stories as they happen in the future and uh, stay in the loop.